if we can just start off, uh, can you guys tell me a little bit about the Kong off this past week? Oh, man. You want to you wanna start good sir? or shall I? No, you'll start because I'll, I'll pick up everything you leave out. <laughs> okay. I mean, honestly, my experience, I can tell you more about the airports of the Kong off than the actual Kong off because I spent most of my time in airports being awesome at flying. Um, man, my review is the con off was a little more intense than I thought. I, I don't think I've ever been so emotionally invested in a couple games of Donkey Kong in my in my existence. Um, but yeah, I met a lot of cool folks that I had just kind of known through um, online presences in the arcade community that were there at the expo and. It was cool to get to meet uh, Richie Knuckles, who is the creator of the Kong Off and who is referenced in the musical, like getting to meet him in person and hang out with everybody and, you know, watch poor Robbie choke on the three key. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. All, right, well, all right. Well, now that she told you that, I'll tell you the real truth. <laughs> okay. Okay. And... In November of 2010, for the first time, I went to go see Richie Knuckles. I went to his arcade because he was having the Tron off because <laughs> the uh, the movie Tron or the remake was being released. And so it seemed like a perfect time to have the Tron off, and he had what was considered the three best Tron players there at the time. So I went there. We had a lot of fun. I met a lot of people. It was a great event. It was very much a uh, media event. I was as busy there as I am at any show that I do. And there was a couple of guys from um, New York who were always calling me on the phone just randomly to jump on their show on a Saturday. And um, one of them, uh, his name was Dave. And so the fact of the matter is I was there and I thought, hmm, let me pull a little stunt here. And I, I, said, to, I said to Richie, I go, you want to go on the radio? I go, satellite radio, big deal, serious stuff. He goes, what do you got? And I go, is that a yes? And he goes, it's a yes. So I called the guy and I left a message and his manager called me back and I said, yeah, this is Billy Mitchell. Dave, uh, Dave is always calling me, asking me to come on his show, him and his partner. And I said, I just happen to be in the area. And if they like, I said, I can, I can come on the show on Saturday. And they said, well, they're on vacation. <laughs> and I go, they are. And he goes, yeah. I go, okay, you can get a message to him. He goes, oh, yeah. I go, okay, you tell him I called. Ten minutes later, the phone rang. It was Dave. He's coming back from vacation to do the show, <laughs> which sort of astonished Richie. But um, it was fun. And so we went there, and we went to New York City, and it was a lot of fun. I mean, when I say that, I mean, I brought my son. He brought his daughter, and we had my other daughter, and uh, my, you know, his wife was there, and the place was full. And we were talking about the Tron off. And um, we actually brought a Donkey Kong there that was outside the Rockefeller Center. And we were doing pictures and standing on it. It was a big media blitz. It was really cool. And then Richie said he wanted to have the Kong off. And he's putting pressure on me. He says, I can't do it without you. He says, come on, we'll do the Kong off. We'll be partners. We'll see where it goes. And I didn't want to because I hadn't played in, an, in, in years. And I just didn't want to. And I didn't want to put the time in. But his friendship was like a little too strong. So I got up there and I said, Okay, and I, I called and I checked with my wife when spring break was for my son, and she told me when it was, and it was in March, and I said, okay, this weekend in March, and I'll do it. So there on the air, it was announced, and the Kong off, the original Kong off was to begin um, on the 11th of March, excuse me, 2011 in March. And so the fact of the matter is we've had it most every year. It was in New Jersey, Denver, Denver, Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh, L.A., L.A., and so the the fact of the matter is, Robbie, as she says, he has won both um, five and six, and he was the favorite to win this time. But the fact of the matter is, again, it brings the best Donkey Kong players in the world, and it brings them to an event. And there's always a little showmanship. There's a little sarcasm. There's a little attitude and personality. That's what makes it fun. But we all actually really get along real well. And this particular Kong off happened to be the busiest as far as it had the highest streaming numbers of all of them. Wow. And the attendance there was the highest. So Miss um, Casey stepping into the arena, she stepped in at the right time. And <laughs> it actually does get really intense and emotional because 
on the last day when you're in the brackets, it's like March Madness. Number eight plays one and two plays seven, and you get one game, one play, one start only. It's just like football on Sunday. Any given any given team can win. Anything can happen. And so that's what makes it really cool. That's awesome. Yeah, it's definitely people kind of bring their best games. I had no idea Eastside Dave had a hand in starting the Kong off. That's kind of cool. Oh, 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 yeah. Let me give him a little more credit. So since we announced that in his studio in November, now comes March. And that Saturday night show that they did in March, they, you know, what do you call that? Remote, whatever. They actually did it from the Kong off. They were there at the Kong off. Uh-huh. Yeah, and so, you know, we've maintained a that's friendship. Uh, that's years. good info for me, actually. <laughs> yeah. oh, oh, you didn't know that? Yeah. No, I we, didn't um, know that. We, that yeah, that helps maintain a friendship. Good, actually. Yeah, the next next year the Kong Off's coming back to New Jersey. And so I, I'm i very sure that he will be there participating in some capacity uh, there at the event. Definitely. And, uh, perfect. He, he's, a, he's a funny <laughs> guy. Uh, that's a wild bunch. Hey, Casey, maybe can I ask you? What kind of other just uh, random things were going on at the Kong off? Billy was probably pretty focused on the Donkey Kong itself. Can, <laughs> can you tell me about like the rave room and kind of a lot of the other oh stuff? Oh my god! <laughs> so I, I went on a few like solo explores through the the expo because I, I don't know I I'm not a, a player of Donkey Kong, so there's only so much straight Donkey Kong I can watch. So on one of my solo travels. <laughs> There was a, a room, just an empty theater room that they had turned off all the lights and they had like glow sticks and like one sad overweight DJ at an unmanned bar and a solo dancer just go into town in this room. And I just affectionately started calling it the rave room because it was just this unattended dark room with some, some pop and music. Um, I think my favorite thing I did just outside of the Kong off itself, because I did kind of hang around that the most, um, was there was a screening of a documentary that has not yet come out officially Ah. called No Princess of the Castle. Um, It's kind of a feminist gaming piece uh, that Billy is actually in quite a bit and uh, some other of my pals. So I went to go see that with Neil, and that was a fun time. That's awesome. I, yeah, I didn't hear about that. Yeah, uh, to clarify things, the actual location is in Banning, California, which is uh, east of L.A. It's called the Museum of Pinball. It has over 700 pinball machines, over 400 video games. And the event at the Museum of Pinball is called the Arcade Expo. So the Kong Off is you know, one of the activities in the Arcade Expo at the Pinball Museum. It's, yeah, it definitely sounds like something I'll have to try to make it out to. Um, you mentioned a little bit about it. Um, I, can I get just your thoughts on, uh, you know, your son being part of the Kong off and uh, what it kind of means for him to be setting some pretty serious scores? Yeah, it's uh, um, if I look at it the wrong way, it could be annoying. <laughs> <laughs> but the fact of the matter is, uh, over the last summer, he goes, Dad, I'm going to set up a, a Twitch here. You're going to stream. You're going to play in the summer. And I go, I ain't playing. It's early. <laughs> yeah. And he goes, yeah, yeah, I'm going to set it up. And I go, you set it up. I ain't playing. Because, I mean, I just didn't want to. I'm. Somebody says, why? I'm. you want me to lie to you? I'm just telling you the truth. I didn't want to. He says he's setting it up anyway. He set it up and he was playing. And, you know, believe me, he wasn't good. <laughs> and um, But he's down from college and he's playing and. So because he's playing as a father and son and spending time, and I started playing, and so we were playing, and we were having a lot of fun. And then, you know, things come back to you, and bang, I hit a million. Bang, I hit a million. Bang, I hit a million. I hit three millions in one week. I hit other scores that, you know, we didn't even record. And then the whole time I'm not paying attention that he's getting better and he's getting better. You know, and then I hit, you know, a big score at the at the first arcade fire, and then I hit another big score down here, and... Um, then we hit other big scores, you know, again, that we weren't even recording. And I guess I wasn't paying attention. And suddenly his scores climbing and climbing and climbing. And just before going to the Kong off, he got 910,000. I mean, that without a doubt puts you in the top 100th of 1% in the mm-hmm. world. And um, it, it puts you, you know, right at the kill screen. And so the fact of the matter is we're there the first day. Everybody hits start. And it's, I mean, everybody crashes and burns. That's just the way it is. 
Um, <laughs> and, you know, you get many starts. That's what makes it easy Friday and Saturday. Well, not him. He got his first game going. He went all the way to like 729,000. He's in first place. I couldn't believe it. I look up on the leaderboard and he's in first place. I saw that while I was Before following I another it. Game. Yeah, I, I, I look up. I play another game later and suddenly I got like 690. And, well, you know, I wish I got higher, but if, wait a minute, I look on the board, wait, he's in first and I'm in second. <laughs> Everybody, yeah, everybody's taking pictures of it because it's kind of a wild thing. And um, <laughs> the truth, truth be known, he had to get back to school, so he was leaving uh, Saturday night anyway. So the old joke was, you know, you didn't have to make the top eight, you had to make the top nine <laughs> because everyone was going to scoot up a position. Uh. And um, But it was really cool to see him there and see him play and uh, – He's the one that handled most of the streaming and technical stuff. You know, he had a lot of help from, um, you know, Jared and Neil. But the fact of the matter is to have him play and do that was incredible. The old joke is that, you know, his kill screen will be is the first father-son kill screen combination ever. Ah, oh, that so is. That'll, that'll be. Yeah, that's pretty cool. That is pretty sweet. Um, yeah, that's awesome. Uh, yeah, just wanted to say I had a chance to meet him at the, uh, you know, musical and uh, what a great kid, uh, you know, super nice. Um, uh, go ahead and tell me, uh, skip this question if you guys want me to. But uh, was there some issues with the uh, hotel, the B&B, where you guys stayed? Where, there in Indianapolis? Uh, no, I'm sorry, uh, at the Kong off. Is that right, Kate? Uh, no, I didn't stay I, I didn't stay at a B and B. I get put up in a palace. Oh, the presidential street. <laughs> yeah, yeah, with, with all kinds of fancy services and and um, like servants and things like that. Hors d'oeuvres. Uh, uh, Casey, yeah, where where was the, the uh, as issue as the at? Oh, don't talk Casey, about Neil like that. <laughs> yeah, as far as You're the here to defend like himself. Casey, she can tell you about that. <laughs> um, well, so my flight got booked on an incorrect night. Uh, what, do you, what, do you mean it got, what? what are you talking about? It got booked on an incorrect night. What you're saying is you screwed up the reservation. I see. I didn't make my reservation, sir. Uh, Brett made my reservation, so I didn't have access to any of my itineraries or anything. I kind of rolled like you did. Someone else booked my flight, and I just showed up. And uh, he he booked it a day late, so I had to stay an extra night. So Cornelia had to Uber me from the Palm Springs airport back to the Kong off, and I ended up going to Sizzler. I don't know what I'm walking into, but I think when I was talking to you on the phone, Michael, uh, Richie Knuckles was in the process of dinning into the hotel. <laughs> I'm still to this. I am not to this day sure why, but. Uh, the gentleman had to had to get into the travel lodge. <laughs> exactly, nothing incriminating needs to be said. Uh, Not at all. Uh, Not at all. <laughs> things just had to happen. Um, yeah. Billy, do you have some? Yeah, these things don't happen. Yeah, yeah, these, these things don't happen to me, only to her. <laughs> That's great, <laughs> Billy. You probably. <laughs> we had to do some uh, some undercover work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll stick with that. Um, Billy, you, you've probably been cramming with uh, Donkey Kong. Uh, is there a second game you're kind of playing? Um, you know, we people might not know. Obviously, you uh, originally got you know the highest score in Centipede, and that's what you know brought you to Iowa and whatever. Uh, do you have a game you kind of just more play for fun, or is your second kind of downtime game? Checkers. Che really? <laughs> no. The truth of the matter is, this is the this is the 40th anniversary of Pac-Man. Uh huh. And. It's the 20th anniversary of the perfect score that I did. No big deal. And so, yeah, being that that's this year or this time of year, um, my plan, I have plans to do some fun stuff on Pac-Man here very shortly. And the idea was to, as you say, cram different things in um, prior to the Kong off. And then, in, and then at some point here, I'll switch over and I'll do some things on Pac-Man that will... Uh, will make some people very, very happy and uh, amazed. And other people will, you know, cry in their Cheerios. So. <laughs> oh, that's that's exciting. Um, that might even bring me to, uh, uh, Billy, I didn't get a chance to ask you, you know, when I met you in Indiana, uh, Anna, I always wanted to ask about the LLC uh, because I remember you, you know, bringing it up and stuff. And even predates when, uh, you know, you've probably heard the expression haters, you know, uh, 
pretty much anybody successful. No. <laughs> pretty much you any. Know about haters? <laughs> I never told. I, I never told you anything about haters. Just put words in my mouth. Um, but anyone <laughs> who's successful kind of has haters. You know, I think it's something a lot of people can relate to. Can you just kind of tell us about the LLC? Not specific members, but just what them as a group mean. Uh, how somebody can avoid being in the LLC and. Uh, just uh what's some bad llc qualities well the truth of the matter is um most people and most people in our hobby are really cool and they're a lot of fun and they are and the reason why we go to so many of these events is the camaraderie the friendships we've made over the years going all the way back to 1982 and the enjoyment that we get from these friendships and sure we met each other whether it was 30 years ago or 20 or 10 and each one of our lives have, has evolved and it's always interesting to see the people to talk to them and see how their life has evolved and you you check on them and maybe see them each year at a particular event some people multiple times and the fact of the matter is again i want to be honest with you there's a lot of a lot of a lot of positive things a lot of positive people like anything in the world the crybabies are the ones that cry loud, who kick and stomp and scream and play the victim card, and they constantly whine, wanting to know, why not me? What about me? Why not me? And I got all the answers as to why not them, but we'll skip that for the moment, and I'll keep going with your question. There's a certain group of people, no matter what happens, all they do is whine and complain and bitch and moan and squawk and bellyache. Well, I, I can do all that without a source. But anyway, it doesn't matter what happens. It doesn't matter what we do. They just constantly play the crybaby victim card. And so one day I got up here, and I, I also said, these people don't go to events. They don't engage. They, they don't interact. Again, it's a very small group, as you indicated earlier. They don't interact. They don't challenge themselves or, you know, step into the arena to have fun because nobody ever gets scoffed at for for not winning something you know it's all it's all a matter of fun and competition more so amongst yourself or amongst your friends as well and the truth of the matter is they sit behind the keyboard and they want to be worshipped from the behind the keyboard and an event will come up we might be a week or two or three from an event and we all laugh we all say okay watch out here it comes sure enough that first one will light up where they start whining and bitching and denouncing the event they call the event why are you having this guy here why are you having that guy there uh do you know this guy's a bad guy you must be bad too oh i'm gonna call and tell everybody about you and it's a lonely lonely world and i i just sit there and it amazes me that somebody who has all of this goodwill and fun and excitement available in life that all of us enjoy and they choose and that's the big word they choose to sit behind their computer and bitch and you don't have to in you know the old thing about well maybe they can't afford to go to the event we have the event in their hometown and they still <laughs> whine complain moan and bitch i have sent them invitations i have made arrangements with a venue that when they come they get in for free okay it isn't it's a crybaby world there's nothing i can do to help those people and when somebody new steps on the scene let's pretend it's casey a year or two ago i say to her i say i say you're gonna come you're gonna come across these people and you're gonna reach out you're gonna try to be nice to them and at some point that they realize you're having the fun that they don't they're just going to play the crybaby card. And there's nothing you can do to help them. Nothing. Zero. You know? Uh, and that's the way it is. And I, as I say, you know, if we got up there and we fed every hungry person in the world, they would say the food didn't taste good. I mean, they, they just, they're like, they're bad news. And we just don't have time for them. And so we brush them aside. Wow. So, sorry, I'm just walking walk my way. <laughs> Absolutely, Billy. Um, I think people can relate. Um, you know, obviously, you kind of are the most high-profile person um, we talk to, but everybody from musicians, politicians, um, 
um, everybody we talk to, you know, the more successful you are, you just have more of the peanut gallery, you know, complaining and not wanting to do it there themselves. Um, do no, I, so- you're, I mean, I mean, I mean, you're absolutely right. I, you know, I have a lot of funny sayings, but they have truth to them. You know, when you, when you're good, people love you. And when you're best, they hate you. Mm-hmm. Um, it, and it's so unfortunate some of the people that would fall into this, I actually think are decent people with decent qualities. And for some reason, they allow a little something, you know, to twist their nature or twist their way. And I wish it wasn't the case. And it is. And again, as the years went on, I think myself, Walter, and others, one at a time after attempting to reach out in the right way, after a while, you just shrug your shoulders and you just shut the door on them. And, and I don't know what to say. I, I, I can sit here and talk in a circle like this for hours. I can give you, I can give you examples. And it's, it's nothing that I wish upon anybody. Uh, and it's actually, it's actually comical. Um, they're mad that they don't get into productions or movies. And when they do, they get in there in a comical way. <laughs> oh, well. Um, yeah, I think I uh, I can probably name the names, some of the names you're thinking of, Billy, but maybe to switch it up a bit, um, can we, uh, Casey, can we talk maybe about uh, your plans and your design for uh, the Billy Mitchell Pop Funko? <laughs> so, Billy, I don't know if you know this, but I have been starting a, uh, a march against the Funko Company as to why you have not been popped yet, because... You, you kind of are an iconic look. So I have a legion of nerds right now tweeting Funko to make you a pop. I um, I think I'm very close. I mean, I've already done the work. All they need to do is just send me, like, a, a little blank Funko, and I'll paint it in for them. It looks really good. But uh, they, yeah, they, they, take, uh, they take submissions for, like, a certain number of people like signing the petition and they'll make it so i think i'm well on my way and that's how i guess i'm i guess i'm i guess i'm a little lost as you know i don't you don't ever see me on the internet you don't ever see me <laughs> correct interacting with people and i don't know what you're talking about is that those little dolls in those little boxes yes that's what those are <laughs> okay um then i do know what you mean and um I've actually seen a couple that I thought kind of looked like me, but they weren't me. And um, I always wondered when that was coming. <laughs> just like just like suddenly a cartoon of me popped on the TV. You know, just like, I mean, I've watched <laughs> that South Park before and something popped on there that obviously had to be me. Um, yep. <laughs> so, yeah, these uh, these things happen. Oh, for sure. Again, it looks awesome, and I don't know anybody more deserving of that. Casey, you um, to get that spearheaded, you would just recommend um, us uh, jumping on the bandwagon and tweeting out to Pop Funko to make it happen? <laughs> I, poor Funko. They're, they're really under fire right now because it's time. I think it'll be good. I mean, you can do all sorts of variants, different suits, different ties. I mean... This is a whole series. I'm really helping them. I, I collect them all, you know, and wait for the Walter Day one to come out. Um, yes. Bill, Billy, yeah, met- he always, yeah, he always comes out after me. He's never number one. <laughs> That's <laughs> good. <laughs> Unless he's using your name. <laughs> We're laughing in here. <laughs> um, Billy, you talked a little bit about, um, you know, not being on the internet, but uh, we love seeing you on Twitch. Uh, do you have any, uh, you don't have any sort of regular appearances on there or is there any um i don't know advice you can give to when we can catch you on there well um everybody tells me and i'm sure they're right and my son yells at me that um when you're on twitch you set a schedule and you follow the schedule and he's correct and you're correct that i don't do that and (laughs) you're also you're also correct that i should do that um but the fact of the matter is um I keep promising myself I'm going to get more regular with the schedule, but I'm told that if you go on Twitch TV, Billy underscore Mitchell, and then if you set it for alerts, each time I do go on there, it'll send you an alert, and then, of course, if it's convenient, you'll tune in. If 
If it's not, you don't. But I, I the only push it, notification I get. <laughs> yeah, and I, I think that I'm eventually going to get things a little more stable here. Um, they're a little chaotic because um, there's kids and stuff still doing their thing and not quite settled to what different adventures are doing. But it's going to get a little more settled, and I'm going to get a real schedule. And not only that, we're going to have other people on the stream. We'll have more than one panel on the screen. We're going to have people from places, museums, places like Doc Mac, places like the Hall of Fame, yes. who would be interacting on the stream as well, telling you what's new and what's going on there. Uh, we're going to get better at it because to just sit there and stream, to me, is what everybody else does. And I'm sort of hard on myself that I want to do what other people don't quite do. That'll be, aw so, that'll be awesome, Billy. Um, Doc Max, a friend of the show, we interviewed him uh, a few weeks ago, and we're going to make a trip up there. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, great guy. Mm -hmm. uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about, um, just because there's so many other gaming documentaries and stuff, and you're actually in this one. Um, do you have any thoughts on Man vs. Snake? Um, Man vs. Snake was kind of cool because what happened all the way back in January of 1983, I was standing right there. Uh huh. I didn't read about it. I didn't anything. I experienced it. I pushed and manipulated the situation to help make it happen. There was actually three guys that were marathoning uh, for a world record. And, of course, that's not even said in the film, I don't think. I don't know. I haven't seen the film because I don't watch movies. But um, <laughs> the truth of the matter is there were three guys there who were vying for a world record marathon game. And... Um, I was there and I was awake and I was there the whole time and it was so cool. It was the golden age of video games. It was inside the original Twin Galaxies. Um, that's what I mean when I say some of those same people that were together back in those days, we still get together at different events, which makes it awesome. And, it, you know, it, it was a real cool story about um, a local guy who basically did what us big city gunners who came to town didn't do so it was a really cool story uh, de definitely um i think it still holds up and everything like that um i love gaming documentaries you know and anything like that and it's awesome seeing you show up in it uh can i ask did you really say that to tim mcveigh while he was playing kind of the uh you know hard love uh you know getting on him like a coach saying that you know if he fails it's all for nothing okay i'm i'm sorry um repeat the last part of your question oh, sorry. In, in did the, i really say that did, did i really say that coaching stuff and then i missed the, the part uh-huh in the movie um during like the cartoon animated part it has you whispering to tim saying like uh you know if you don't get the billion uh it, it's all for nothing this and that um 100 percent. that's so awesome <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, what i what i said to him as i said you know you've played all this time and i said if you come up short it means you're going to get to do it all over again. I says, you'll have another chance at it. And if you do it right now, you'll never have to do it again. And, and he was down, he was down to about four men. Um, and there's one particular board that was far tougher than the rest as they rotate through. And he got to that board and he did that board without dying. Nice. And he did that board without dying. That's when I knew, and he knew, that he was going to go over the top. Um, because that board, he could have easily lost all four men. But he did the board, and he didn't lose any. And I, actually, I don't think he lost any men after that, you know, for the last, say, you know, 10 million points. That's... And that was in the morning. His mother was there. She would not come over near the game because she didn't want to distract him. Let's tell the truth. She didn't want to. Re she didn't want to be the reason why he lost. <laughs> you know, that's that's the way it translates. And there okay. were people all around, and it had gathered. And the people who went to sleep, who didn't stay with him through the night, like myself, they, um, you know, they had woken up now. The place was completely bustling, and Rockola, who was the manufacturer of the game, was actually on the phone, and they were sort of, you know, listening to it play by play. And the reason why is they had committed that if Tim and another guy who were trying for it 
not the guy in the movie. That guy was nowhere to be found. But another guy <laughs> named Tom, whichever one of them was the first one to hit the billion points, Rockola was going to give them a machine. And that's exactly what happened. The machine that was there belonged to Rockola. It had been loaned to Twin Galaxies. And so at that point, it became the property of Tim. That's awesome. Wow. Just like he says uh, in the movie, that's uh, back in the day, your own arcade cabinet, and that's a dream come true. Um, Billy, you can tell me to sk- right. skip it, but uh, I, I know the name and I'm familiar. You don't, you, you don't skip anything. Okay. You don't skip anything. But, okay, great. Um, but, depending on, but depending on what you ask, I make you do your job, so be cautious. For sure. Um, anyways, I think uh, the villain of that movie, Dwayne Richards, is a real bum, and I can give examples why. Um, but I just didn't know uh, what your thoughts on him were, or if you wanted me to kind of jump in and give my thoughts. Uh, <laughs> what are your thoughts on the filthy Canadian Dwayne um, Richards? He, yeah, he was um, he was around from 1985, and uh, was very interesting. Um, and sometime around 1986, um, gaming basically came to a close, if that's the right word, competitive gaming. Uh, it was the end of the golden age of video games. Um, there were uh, there were not those organized contests that we had experienced, you know, through the 80s up to that point. Um, the arcade Twin Galaxies uh, that Walter had had closed, and basically we all kind of looked at each other being, you know, say 20 years old and realized we couldn't play games forever and what are we going to do now and so everybody sort of went off to their worlds and their careers or maybe to their educations or maybe to their families or whatever each circumstance was and then um when things began again and things got all fired up in 1999 after the perfect pac-man um that's when again everybody came together not everybody the people who did came together and um, he was an interesting guy then, too. Um, and I began to see a small change in him um, that I narrowed down to the end of 2004. Mm-hmm. And it became more and more difficult. And then at some point, it just became too difficult. Um, and good luck to him. Yeah, exactly. I think we're all on the same page there and kind of have the same thoughts. Um, yeah, again, if, yeah. if I'm... Yeah. If I'm uh, uh, yeah. If I'm okay to say this, I also just want to talk about um, Mr. Awesome. Well, well, I was I was going to say I was going to say after you shut the recorder off, I'll tell you the real story. But anyway, <laughs> um, I wanted just to get your <laughs> thoughts on Mr. Awesome, Roy Schultz, almost ironically named Mr. Awesome. Uh, he had the Awesome Mobile, mm-hmm. and I don't know if any of you have a copy of his book of awesomeness. And I just didn't know if you guys. Yeah, had... I, I think um, I, I I think Casey was a, was a heavy part of that book. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Yeah, I actually did all the illustrations. For she that. she called in the. She's the only one who called but in I, for the Playgirl I, ad. Yes. Yeah. 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 I am. Um, again, in wow. Now that I put this together, ooh, this is scary. At the same event in 1985, that I met our previous subject is when I met him. Ooh, wow, that's scary. We should have skipped. Anyway, um, <laughs> just. Um, then, then, yeah, it was then, and then it was again in, um, ooh, it was then, it was in January of 85, that first event, and then again in June of 1985 at Johnny Z's, and he was clearly, clearly so unpleasant <laughs> that I, I just chose, I just chose not to deal with him. And over the years, I've had people like yourself, not quite like yourself, people call me and say, I don't want to do a story Um, because he tried so hard to engage me. (laughs) And I just I just had made a decision. But it was it was I'd like to do a story on the ongoing rivalry you have (laughs) with this gentleman. And I said, and I said, to the, I said to the reporter, I said, okay, I said, I'm ready right now if you are. And he says, yes. And I go, I'm going to tell you every single thing, every single verbal interaction I have ever had with him <laughs> since 1985. And he said, okay. I said, you're ready? Yeah. He goes, I said, listen closely. And here it is. <laughs>
And just like that, a little delay and a little lap. I have not spoken to him since 1985. So the rivalry, the the silliness, and all that that's talked about is nothing. It's just something that's completely fabricated. Uh, they're, they're just. Um, I mean, I've, been at, I've, I've been at I've been at places where he was, <laughs> and I just simply walk past them because it's easier not to engage in negativity. And I, I that's just the route that I chose. And um, you know, I I didn't realize it at the time. I didn't realize in the time at the time the impact it was having. It was just the route that I chose. But since then, I've had some people say to me, "Oh man, that's rough." And I go, "Well, how is that rough?" And someone says, "Well, get up there and be really upset or really angry or really wanting to engage with somebody like your best friend or your spouse or whatever." And they don't talk, and all they do is just sit there. Don't just sit there. Say something. You know. I mean, they'll. They'll get more mad because you're mad. I mean, because you're not getting mad or because you're not engaging. And I didn't I didn't do it that way on purpose. I just, that's the route I chose because I, I wasn't going to engage in negativity. That's, so. Absolutely. Yeah. I think anybody who uh, watches some videos of these individuals know that's the best route. And uh, they are yeah, just some characters, you know, we'll put it that way. Uh, man, man, let me tell you something. You have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> some uh, of this stuff, some of this stuff, you couldn't put in a movie because it wouldn't even make sense. Uh, again, uh, <laughs> I'm sure everybody's, you know, come to you about every movie idea, but I think that every time I do research, yeah. I think Casey probably thought the same thing. Uh, this is, you know, cra- the real story is always crazier than yeah. fiction. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, very some, of true. some of this stuff couldn't even make Family Guy. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know, uh, Michael, my my songwriter uh-huh. who uh, wrote all the music for the musical, he actually grew up in the same religious organization that Dwayne Richard grew up in. Like, they grew up together. And uh, he felt really bad when I asked him to write the music for this because, you know, he had heard all the all the nonsense from Dwayne that, you know, Billy Mitchell was in the Illuminati and uh, he, he, no, literally Dwayne has said that Billy no, Mitchell I, is in the Illuminati I know, we've and has seen, it out for him. I love uh, when so, he, uh, I mean, this guy, he's, He's on a different planet. <laughs> uh, for sure. He's uh, brought me a lot of, uh, I, I laugh a lot of Dwayne Riches. Anyways, uh, to maybe if we can keep it on that topic of the musical, uh, Casey, can you talk a little bit about uh, future plans for the musical? And also you're talking about, I, again, I have the word wrong, but uh, a way we can actually get a, uh, what do you, the transcript or a copy of the play. Well, why don't, you, yeah. why don't you pay the ticket and sit down and watch it? Well, I was Is specifically, I, I mean, I have seen it twice, but I think there are going to be some people who maybe won't get the opportunity to see it. Obviously, anybody who's within, you know, multiple hours, you know, should come and see it live. That's the only way to experience it. Yeah, no, no, I'm just teasing. No, I'm just teasing. The truth is I'm asked that too. And, you know, and I, people say, oh, do you have a CD or can I see it? And what they really mean is can I copy it? And that would kind of wreck what it is Casey's trying to do. And um, it's, uh, I don't know, it's, it's a difficult decision. I'm glad I don't have to make. Uh, and I'm, uh, <laughs> it make. just taught me a little bit about, I've never uh, had too much appreciation for plays, but I realize why that thing has to be performed live. And you're right, it'd lose a lot of what makes it special if it was filmed and watched on a grainy video. Um, maybe, yeah, just give us, uh, where can we catch it, the play next? So, we actually, in February, closed the run that you saw, which is the extended cut, the full-length production of it, and uh, that is the script that we're kind of going with. I ran another round of edits on it this month, but uh, the plan has always been to see if we can kind of take theater into a new realm, because not, you know, too shocking with the internet and being able to stream everything people don't really go out to live plays anymore so we're kind of trying to bring the plays to them and uh we are going to try to do a small summer tour of gaming expos and uh video game shows so the first one that we know we're we're about 85 percent booked and sure on this is um an indie again because that's where i live so it's just the easiest um, we're doing Gen Con in August, and then 
the owners of what they call the PopCon. It's like a pop culture convention. Uh, they want us to do a five-city tour throughout the summer. So we are currently looking for corporate sponsors and official dates for all of that. But it sounds like you will be able to see the final fully realized, fully funded Arcade Fire this summer. That'll be exciting. Uh, yeah, I thought you guys uh, maybe publicized hammering down Gen Con. I think that'll be a great place to uh, show it off to maybe. No, 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 and it'll be good. She's in. She's in India. She can't screw up the Airbnb or the plane ticket. <laughs> <laughs> I want to spend like thirty hours in the Palm Springs airport. <laughs> I love it. I was, uh, yeah, following the, uh, uh, you know, updates of that whole adventure, and that's why I had so many questions about calling off. It really sounds like a, a, an eventful time for all you guys. Yeah, the next song off next year will be in New Jersey, so that's probably within shooting distance for you. Oh, for sure. I mean, we're definitely going to try uh, try to make it out, out there. I can't think of a way to uh, convince the girlfriend, so I think you'll probably see me solo again. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, maybe uh, just to wrap it up, I want to have you guys back as much as often, but can you uh, maybe, Casey, start with... Uh, where we can find info on the play and just you yourself, you know, because I know you uh, do a lot of other plays too. Uh, so I actually run a producing theater organization in Indy uh, that is the main producer of Arcade Fire called Catalyst Repertory. Um, so that's my theater company. If you want to find us on Facebook, um, Arcade Fire has its own Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And then my last name is Ross, just R-O-S-S, and my profile is pretty obvious because it's kind of arcadey right now. So um, that is me on Facebook. I tend to post most of my updates of just general projects I'm working on in Indie on my stuff, but Arcade Fire will post the most up-to-date info on where to find either Billy appearances or Eastside Dave stuff. Uh, we share a lot and then just stuff with the musical. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, and also just uh, Richie Knuckles is a good one to maybe follow. Uh, he seems like a good guy. And uh, I even got my, I even ordered my hot sauce and I'm wearing my Eat Sleep Donkey Kong shirt right now that I ordered from Neil. So everybody check them out. Amazing. Um, Bill, can you give us some plugs? Um, you already talked a little bit about Twitch, but uh, just, uh, I don't know, What are, do you have any... Um, conferences or events already planned up for this summer i'm sorry um really cool in northern virginia comic-con uh that's the first weekend of june um that actually will be the first time i've done that one and that looks really super cool i'm gonna begin hitting and announcing and engaging that one hard because again it, it seems so positive in addition to that before that is Walter's 70th birthday. You know, our humor is that, you know, um, 70 years on one man, no death. You know, that's our humor. <laughs> he's got to, and he's got to make it to 117 to hit the kill screen. <laughs> so you know, is, yeah. uh, is that going to be at an you know, event? Uh, is that going to be at an event or is that a, uh, in Iowa? No, that's at the Museum of Pinball again, just where we... Great. Okay, right, good. I was confused about that, whether he had his birthday at the Kong off or if it's still coming up. Right, I'm glad uh, that was clarified. And then and then we'll see. It's not 100% finalized, but there is the opportunity coming here to go to... Um, we call it the Aussie Kong off, which will be the third Kong off in Australia. And that's in um, August. Oh, yeah, I've been seeing advertisements for that. Uh, you know, there's a lot of different, like, uh, northern versus southern hemisphere contests and stuff. Billy, maybe one of the most important questions I should ask, um, since you stay off the Internet, is there a credible um, place we can get updates on you? Uh, should we maybe follow Richie Knuckles, or what do you recommend to stay up to date with Billy Mitchell? Um, that's a good question. Um, no, you shouldn't follow Richie. He <laughs> keep himself up to date. Um <laughs> I don't know. That's a heck of a good question. Um, where would you go to keep updated on Billy Mitchell? I don't know. Maybe Casey knows. Um, exactly. I think we can um, always no, ask mean, Casey. I mean, you could. You, I mean, you could go to. Twitch. You could go to. In, you could go to the Instagram or the Twitch or, or me. It is I have. <laughs> yeah, I, I was gonna say. I. I, I mean, I, I don't even know what my Facebook or uh, Twitter is. 
I, you know, they're, they're, they're not, they're, yeah, yeah, they're not run by me, but I guess they're pretty accurate. <laughs> That's, yeah, all right. <laughs> That's so great. Um, Billy, I told Casey this, but I just wanted to say, well, it, go ahead. I'm sorry. I just wanted to say, uh, you signed so much cool stuff uh, for me and for friends. I gave. Uh, you really made my nephew super excited and my friends. And uh, I've, I haven't met one person who doesn't love the hot sauce. It's really legit. Well, um, the fact of the matter is, <laughs> I, I like to tell you tell this one story. There was a guy who was a friend and. He was fine. A little odd, but he was a friend. Um, and anywhere. And so what happened was I met him at a show, and he was going to see his friend. And I gave him a case of sauce to give to his friend, a whole case. Because his friend is, is a friend of mine, and he's a good guy, and I wanted to get it to him. So I gave it to him. He goes, oh, yeah, great, no problem. I'll bring it to him because he, he had driven to the event, and he was driving through that guy's hometown. So I hear from the guy like two two weeks later, and there's 24 bottles in a case. And he goes, he go. The guy calls me and he goes, "Hey man, I need more hot sauce." And I go, "More hot sauce? What are you talking about? I just sent it to you." <laughs> he goes, "I go. It was two weeks ago." He goes, "He goes. Yeah, it's gone." I says, "Gone?" I says, "24 bottles gone in two weeks." <laughs> and he goes, "He says I got one bottle." I go, "One bottle?" Yeah, the other guy kept 23 and gave him one. <laughs> well, I could... but, the funny, but the funny part of the story now, without a doubt, that guy that I'm talking about, he's in the LLC. LLC. He loved the hot sauce so much before, he'd steal 23 bottles, and now he'll tell you it's no good. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, yeah, my number one goal in life is to avoid the LLC. Casey, were you going to add to What did you say? I'm sorry. Oh, I just want to—I want to know who stole twenty-three bottles of hot sauce. <laughs> hey, it'd probably be me if you put them in front of me. <laughs> but uh, um, again, yeah, just uh... well, I'm—I'm well, I'm good at this. I tell—I tell a lot of stories, and I don't necessarily talk bad about people, so I've gotten good at it. Uh, we want to have you guys, uh, you know, as regular as you guys can. I don't want to take up too much of your time, uh, so uh, I'll let you guys go. Uh, Billy, do you have anything? Um, motivational off your top of your head everybody kind of enjoys your motivational uh, you know uh, to help us out um, no <laughs> that, I think that's, that's a, that, that'll be the best that, ending that, 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 well I, I guess I was going to say it doesn't seem like a motive it doesn't seem like that kind of interview where I would give motivation I'm sitting here talking and telling silly stories about silly people Oh, definitely. I understand, Billy. Uh, well, definitely. Hopefully, we have you again on the show uh, next time you're free, and we'll stay up to date on the newest tournaments and stuff, and we'll try to make it out to some live events. Absolutely. Uh, we want to thank. Yeah, maybe you can come out in uh, August again for the the fully realized show. It sounds like a good time, and yeah, uh, if I can yeah. help out anyway, I'll I'll be there. Um, Again, Casey Ross, we want to thank you. Um, everybody should check you out. Um, and the one and only video game player well, of the century. Well, well I'll, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll, um, I'll get to you a case of sauce, and then your, your job is to decide or give it out or whatever reason it is to 24 of your followers. How about that? Um, I, can't, I can't actually say I heard exact all of that, Billy. What would you say? I said what I'll do is I said I'll give you a case of sauce. You have 24, 24 bottles, and you'll decide how those 24 bottles get distributed. Ah, oh, yeah. oh, Billy. 24 from... people who are your listeners. Um, well, I hope we have 24 listeners, but we for the real do. Um, but I'm not lying when I say uh, it's not my brother-in-law, but my sister's boyfriend. Uh, n I mean, honestly, wasn't so impressed with or doesn't know so much about your gaming exploits. He just knew about your hot sauce and he's like oh can you get me some of that hot sauce um and then i keep i bought a good amount um from neil at the event and uh, everybody who comes over uh uses it and uh i don't need to get into the reasons or the secret recipe or you know why it's better than uh the stinker hot sauces we have but uh again we love it i basically put it on everything all righty sir <laughs> Again, uh, thanks for 
being with us, Billy. Um, I think we'll let you go. And yeah, hopefully we can got, have you guys on the show as much as possible. Alrighty. You guys take care. Thank you very kindly, sir. Absolutely. Um, as always. <laughs> you guys take care and uh, yeah, say hi to the families, guys. 